Good morning, Liz. How are you? Good morning, Liz. Well, how morning, are you? Ken. Good morning. Hi, Linda. You got a haircut. I did. Finally. I'm jealous. Yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Um, Genevieve texted me this morning. Um, she's not able to join us. She had her second vaccine. Oh. And she's not feeling well. Poor baby. Yeah. Did she say which one she had? I didn't ask her, Eldon. It, no. it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, and here, you know, Genevieve's quite a bit younger than I am, and she was really telling me, go get that vaccine, Liz. Go get that vaccine. So I, I heard it's tougher on younger people than, yeah. than yeah. us more mature. That's because you have an immune system. When you're over 60, after, over right. 50, your immune system starts to go away. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. So she's excused. Robert, was I correct that you are screen sharing for us today? And did you get my um, input? A little... I can't hear you. I can't either. <laughs> we can't hear you, Robert. Sucks. No. Uh, you're, you're coming in. There you go. Yeah. Starting. Sorry, Zoom talking up. Um, yes, I got um, everything you emailed, I think, yesterday. And who is recording this meeting? I turned on the recording. And is it going to be on in a minute? Yep. Should we have the forum? Yep. Oh. There's Linda. Good morning. No, it's on. Wow. Sudden everybody's on. Steve, I'm here. Steve, Can you hear me? yes, you're sideways and you are Carla Domeyer today. Oh, good for me. There you I'm are. in my car. I'm in the desert, so <laughs> I'm Wonderful. Carla Domeyer. Why am I Carla? Hmm. Is it her car? No. Oh, you know what? No, it's my car, but hmm, who knows? You can hear me okay, though, right? Yes. yes. All right. Well, it's it's beautiful La Quinta. Ooh, oh, it's my. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm at a public park plugged in to charge my electric car to come home later today. So. Good morning, Jeff and Tara. Good morning. Hi, Good morning. Brian and Amanda. Hi, Lois. Hi. Uh, my end was. You're on. Hey, here we go. Actually, you're um, on twice. I, Lois is on twice. Yes, she is. I don't know why. <laughs> Who knows? Lois, it's because you're twice as important. <laughs> I guess. I, she gets two votes. <laughs> Ooh -hoo -hoo. Um, let's call the meeting to order today, um, April 26th at 8.03 AM. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Can you see this? Yes. Yes. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the flag, to the flag of the United, the United States, States of America, America. and to and the republic for which it stands, stands one, nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. all. Thank you. Um, roll call. Irene? I'm, oh, oh, let me read it. Hang on. All right. Uh, Chair Hollingsworth. Here. Uh, Vice Chair Molno. Here. Lois Derry. Here. Trustee Steve Doma. Here. Trustee Swanson. Here. And uh, Genevieve Chen is, is excused for today's meeting. Posting yeah, of the four. agenda. The agenda is posted 72 hours prior to each meeting. And public comments. We welcome public comments. Irene, are there any public comments? At this time, there are no public comments. Thank you. Let's move on um, to our item, um, approval of the minutes. And um, I hope you all got a chance to read the minutes. And I kind of hate to start our meeting like this, but I don't feel comfortable making a motion to approve these minutes. 
and on page three of five, I guess it's page eight of the packet, the second paragraph starts talking um, with Vice Chair Molno. And it goes on, it's the second full paragraph on that page eight of our packet. At least yeah, it says eight of 82. And it talks about Vice Chair Molno and Trustee Derry and some of the different contributions to um, an important conversation, discussion that we had about the Coal Public Library identity and advertising. And I feel that this paragraph is important and it does not adequately describe our discussion. It missed the main points on with, how to designate the Coral Library on ads and promotions. And um, I think it also misquotes our mayor. He did not talk about uh, combined departments. He talked about an integrated approach in the programs. I'm gonna make a motion to postpone the approval of these minutes so that they can be worked on to more adequately describe that discussion. If I get a second, we'll can vote, discuss and vote. If there is not a second, the motion dies and another motion can be made. I would second I motion. Well, uh, let me make the motion. Okay. <laughs> I move that we um, table the meeting minutes and postpone their approval until our meeting in May and giving staff an opportunity to um, improve that paragraph to better reflect the discussion that we had. Is there a second? Second. Dr. Molno, thank you. Is there a discussion? The only uh, discussion I would say is that I, I also had an objection to the meeting minutes where um, on, on the paragraph talking about the Amazon locker, uh, it was objected to by more of the trustees, not just Chair Hollingsworth. So, I don't know if that's a separate motion I need to make for that, but I think that paragraph needs to be amended as well. I seem to recall many of us chiming in on the, the inappropriateness of the locker. I would like to um, uh, agree with, uh, with, with Steve uh, regarding the Amazon locker and just I'll also comment, Liz, that I had intended to bring up the very same point that you did. Um, about the paragraph on uh, page three. Any more discussion? Um, Lois, did you want to add anything? No, that's fine. I'm just trying to get rid of my cat. Okay. Eldon, did you want to add anything? No, um, that's fine. Okay. Um, all those in favor of the motion, uh, Steve? Nope, sorry. Okay. Nope, all sorry. those in favor to uh, um, approve the motion to postpone approval of the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Um, let's go on to the chairperson's reports and my report. Um, our meeting changed um, to permanently schedule our meetings at 8 o'clock. That proposal will go to the city council for their May meeting. Um, on May 3rd, there's a community services forum it's on Zoom, and it's regarding summer um, programming, and it's a community forum asking for community input. On May 7th, the City Council um, has a meeting at 8.30 in the morning, and the library budget that we're going to see today will be presented to them. And then on May 8th is the Library Foundation's Trivia Night. And um, Robert, could you please share that um, Trivia Night PDF? It's tiny. Hmm. So they're having their Trivia Night Saturday night. You can go onto their website and um, be a sponsor, get tickets, or just find out more information. Thank you, Robert. That's the end of my report. Um, Eldon, do you have anything to report? No. Lois, do you have anything to report? I do not. Linda, um, besides the Korean Art Gallery, do you have anything to report? 
Linda, you're on mute. Only I, my only report is on the Crane Art Gallery. Steve, do you have anything to report besides the marketing and publicity? Uh, no, we'll, we'll get to my agenda item about the San Reno Center later. Thank you. Did I miss anybody? Okay. Um, City Council Liaison Report. Mayor Udi, do you have anything that you'd like to report? Oh, I think Paul's going to cover it. It's budget season. Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, Crane Art Gallery Liaison. Linda? I would like to report that uh, we had uh, a virtual exhibit by <laughs> Fortunati that was up from February through March that has been taken um, off of the website and there is now a virtual um, art gallery link to Emily Sunez. Um, her uh, paintings, uh, oils are landscapes that reflect the uh, uh, the Southwest. It would that um, uh, link will be up through April and May. Uh, we're not real clear yet on the opening of the library. Hopefully we'll find out a little bit more uh, this morning, but um, we are, are anticipating that we'll probably have at least one more virtual um, exhibit uh, prior to being able to go back to what we had done in the past. Uh, th thinking that uh, part of having a, an, an exhibit that is actually hung in the, the uh, Crane Art Gallery. It has always in the past included uh, a reception uh, that was given by the, uh, by the artist. And it was um, an effort to uh, not only show her art, but also give people the ability to um, easily make purchases. Uh, I do have to say that um, I, to the best of my knowledge, um, none of the artists have sold anything while they have had the virtual exhibits up so that we have uh, not been bringing in any income. Not that it was uh, tremendously large, but it was um, it was nice. Uh, you know, every little bit counts. So we're looking forward to a time when we can have uh, in-person exhibits and uh, receptions again by the artists. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Molno. Marketing and publicity report, Steve. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, we had a, a, a brief meeting. Brian was not able to join us, um, but uh, we, we chatted briefly about what's coming up soon at the library. Obviously, the May 4th uh, trivia night, the Star Wars Family Trivia Night's coming up. And on May 8th, the foundation is doing the trivia night fever. So we've got two trivias in, in the span of a week. And uh, on May 12th, the Chinese Club is doing Cooking with Mrs. Lin. And May 15th, the Charcuterie 101, the Take and Make, is going to be available via Zoom. So in my discussion with Irene, I, I thought that what might be good moving forward for this marketing and publicity meeting is for us to look at what's coming up ahead, discuss the best ways that, that uh, we're using to promote these, and then do sort of a post-mortem post -mortem afterwards to go, okay, what avenues of advertising did we use and was that effective? Did we do a a Facebook ad? Did we do a physical banner? And what was the what was the result of that? And is that so we're spending money effectively and that we're choosing the right avenues for whatever particular uh, event it happens to be? What's the target audience? How are we reaching them? Obviously, there's there's different tools for, for different jobs. So that's kind of what we were looking at doing there. And so I think in future marketing publicity meetings, that's going to be the focus of what we're doing. The other thing was making sure that our branding is clear, that uh, obviously community services is the umbrella that the recreation department and the library fall under, and that these things are clearly identified and that you know what's a library event and what's a recreation event, so it's clear in people's minds, because it's it, the location is one thing, but the, the intent of what the actual event is should be clear as well. Is this a, is this a learning event is this a reading event that's library focused or is it a recreation event that's more more uh geared towards a physical activity or, or some other thing like that so we're we're making sure that we define those things clearly and i'm sure we'll talk more about this a little bit later but uh, it just from a branding perspective as, as a person with a marketing background we want to make sure that that's clear in people's minds so that in our publications in our advertising that these are clearly defined and people know this is a library activity 
this is a recreation activity. They're under the umbrella of community services, both. Uh, but and, and especially when we get the San Reno Center done and we have two different locations, we can know, oh, I go here for this one and I go to this building for that one. That's all I've got. Thank you. You know, I, I think your point is very important about um, distinguishing between rec department and community services um, department and the Kroll Public Library. And we discussed this at our February 22nd meeting. We discussed this at our March meeting and um, maybe Brian can speak to what is staff doing um, in response to what the Board of Trustees has said. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, we are working on our on our next activities guide, which will be going out in May, and we will identify uh, the offerings with an icon uh, that delineates a library or a recreational offering. Um, and then I'm currently just talking to, to the city manager about looking at this um, in, a, in a more broader view. And uh, we'll be exploring that as part of a larger citywide marketing campaign um, with Amanda Fowler and her team. What is that broader view? Uh, the, the broader view. So the city, the city is looking to uh, Amanda. If you if you wouldn't mind jumping on in here, um, but basically it's it's looking at a at a more comprehensive branding strategy uh, for uh, for the city's programs and 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 messaging. You know, and, and Brian and I have also been talking about clearly uh, revisiting the missions statements of both recreation and the library, so we know you know what programming logic belongs in which bucket and then how to you know brand that amanda yeah just to add on i think what brian means is like what we've realized is that we need marketing for the entire city um so finding a unified approach mm -hmm. that then then shows each department's offerings whether it's library recreation economic development um so really all we mean is just kind of a coordinated off effort that's hopefully using one consultant who will help us um, with a budget that's focused in the city manager's office, but would still be department specific. Um, so we'll just help coordinate that citywide. If I can jump in here and, and suggest that I, I don't know that merely adding uh, the, the city seal or the library rectangle logos could be enough because I don't think either of those icons say library or recreation department because you kind of just got the city seal. So maybe in working with the consultant, I'm, I'm happy to assist a new logo could be designed for the recreation department. Again, I don't think there's one that exists right now, is there? I don't think so, no. No, so so you're merely putting that in the activities guide. No one's gonna understand that that's a recreation activity. And the, the you know, you we all know the logo for the Crow Library, but only because it's usually accompanied by the words Crow Public Library. So. There, there needs to be a visual mark, a brand, a logo that delineates the two of them. And that takes a long time for people to understand. It, 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 you know, you need to, you know, the Nike swoosh for the longest time, they had Nike and then the swoosh, then they can finally get away with putting the word Nike and they just omitted that. Now the swoosh is there. Now, you know, but that took years to do. So there needs to be a visual representation here. If you're going to do that, I, it, you know, it's an education process. For the for the consumer, sorry, advertiser, sorry, patron, community member. So you see where my background is. I think everyone is a customer. Thank you, Liz. Yes, uh, I just wanted to make one comment, and I I understand and I appreciate that the 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 upcoming um, guide services guide will will in some way delineate between the library and recreation. Um, I raised this concern several months ago, um, indicating that the weekly message that came out from the city manager did not differentiate on programs between the library and recreation. At that time, Amanda uh, said that that was no problem to fix it, that she, she took care of that and that she would do it. I have brought this up at every meeting since then and nothing has changed. I think you got to make sure. I think the differentiation between recreation and library is probably more important to this group than it is to you know the the, the general residents and the public. You know, I think the public is after you know good effective programming. I disagree. I think the public wants to know, and and I think it's important 
in the long game to keep the words cruel public library on everything that goes out about the library, whether it's a Facebook post, a flyer, an insert in the Tribune, what have you. And that's the long game is about donations. And we're gonna get into some discussion about donations during our budget. And to build the donations process, we need to have our name out there all the time. And um, whether it's for to support the Friends bookstore and get people on, you know, when after reopening to buy books or to just support us. In the foundation meeting minutes in today's packet, they got $25,000 of donations just by sending out a letter. That tells us that the community supports the library and it's very important that the library's identity be out there consistently. Um, Robert, if you don't mind, could you please share the um, Smarter Living Series flyer? I have a question about that. Um, I, I was happy to get this Smarter Living Series. Well, I think I was happy because I'm in the senior citizen group now. And um, what is in, this is a good program that's coming up this week, but it's just advertised as community services. It doesn't say rec department on here at all. And so that concerns me. Thank you, Robert. As, um, it's not library or rec department, and I think it needs to be rec department. That's in the re-envisioning report, the Smarter Living series in particular. I also bring this up because I believe the Smarter Living series may be a good place for staff to start talking about what makes this rec department and not library. And those are the conversations about a lot of the programs um, that the re-envisioning process of the rec department is about to um, have programs where they sensibly um, fit and eliminate some of the overlap. Thank you, Robert. I'm done with that slide. Um, so can you talk about why the city um, is dropping rec department from some of their advertising and promotion? I, I don't disagree at all with what you were saying about the Crow Public Library branding. And I would, you know, ask for some time and space so that Brian and the team can work through the mission statements for the community services, whether that's community services department or recreation department. Because, you know, Brian's been doing a lot of best practices and benchmarking about, you know, how other cities have approached these types of services and uh, I, I think we just need to give him some time and space to you know let that ferment a little bit he there's been information shared about what happens with other libraries now i'm asking for some time so the brian can complete his, his work i see okay um the kroll library has a vision statement in our strategic plan and I think it would be great at a future meeting to revisit that with the board too. Any other thoughts about advertising for the Crowell Public Library? Uh, my only um, other comment would be that I hope that this is not like um, some things that we've seen in the past that just keeps um, being tabled until the next meeting. Uh, one time after another, it just it seems like this particular issue in various forms has been going on for quite a few months, and um, I'm disappointed that uh, there really has not been much of an effort um, to address it. I, personally, if there is, if there are other cities that are combining libraries with recreation departments, I would like to have that information. And if that could be shared with the board, I think that would be, uh, it would be helpful. But I think our message is clear unless any trustee would like to say differently that. No, again, I, I would, you know, I'm not arguing at all against the branding and recognition for the Kroll Public Library. Thank you, Mayor. But, you know, and I, and I think structurally, 
And so, I so appreciate your in the city, you know, is you know, yes, it's intertwined, but it's an independent event, I think. Well, but and I think I think, I think doing we can certainly, you know, ask Brian to come back and share, you know, how other cities are, are looking at the, the, their programming. Um, I think you're doing some great, great activities. And Brian, you've brought some great activities to our city and amped up other activities, even during COVID. And um, I, I hope the rec department starts to shine because of those things. I also think it's such a great opportunity, um, you know, if something like Story Walk becomes a joint program between library and rec, let's advertise it as such. Um, and Robert, can you please put that last slide up of um, Lacey Park Story Walk? This is one of my favorite Facebook posts lately. And there's Tara and Rebecca in the park with the Public Works. So now Public Works is also getting credit and they're working on the story walk. And um, thank you, Robert. I just think those are the kinds of things that are really great messages too. Shall we go on to the budget and CIP liaison report? Um, I met with Brian and Robert on Friday and we reviewed um, not the current year budget, but the budget report that we're gonna see with um, Director Chung in a few minutes. And um, they were very helpful and got me to think about a lot of things and thank you. Um, that's the end of my report and San Marino Center renovation update. Ooh, caught me when I was drinking water. Uh, we had a great meeting on the 15th. Uh, we hadn't met in a while because um, our, our meetings at the San Marino Center are as needed. We're scheduled every, every other Thursday. But we met on the 15th to discuss the interior finishes. And it was a really, as usual, uh, Mayor Udy can, can attest, a, a lively discussion with a lot of give and take and the, the group generally starts to go one way and then other people <laughs> went another way. So after after much discussion, we came up with some suggestions on, on slight modifications, and what the overall color palette was going to look like and what the interior finishes are. And uh, we had an opportunity to, uh, on our own, go in and look at the, the, the board that uh, the architect had put together for us with the different finishes and then, and then weighed in on that. So it's gonna be a very nice looking, very functional, um, uh, interior to the to the facility. I think the thing for me, there's always that balance between having something that looks really nice, something that's going to be affordable, and something that's really able to be maintained over the years. And I think the the task force has done a good job of balancing all the stuff together. The diversity on the task force uh, with architects and and others uh, enables us to make these decisions in a way that I think really represents the community, all the concerns. We don't always agree on everything, but we have a discussion that, that generally leads to consensus. And, and I think that's one of the hallmarks of the group. So, uh, I think that's, that's going to be, um, uh, I think we're gonna have a fine looking facility moving forward. Mr. Mayor, do you have any thoughts or comments, anything you want to add? No, I agree. I think the, uh, dynamics of that task force are uh, really fun and outstanding. We have a good good balance with some architects and some people with great opinions and everyone respects each other. So we get to, to some some good outcomes pretty quick. That, that's the phrase, everybody respects everybody else and it's, it's kind of nice. Thank you, thank you for your report. Let's go on to administrative business, the management analysts report and we welcome back Robert. Everyone, glad to be back. Um, so there's really not much to update you on. As we know, this library still maintains conservative spending, so there hasn't been anything outlandish. Um, the unfortunate thing, though, is donations are still not materializing as we would like them to be, and that seems to be the case for the next few months, which is a scary thought, but that's, that's out of our control, unfortunately. But one bit of positive news, though, is passports have spiked quite considerably. And so it's my understanding that we have appointments booked for the next 
I think through May. Irene, correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna have that revenue coming in and it sounds like that's gonna be increasing. Um, there is discussion of potentially opening the library some may, maybe later, um, well, early summer. So if that happens, we may be able to expand our passport collection, but those are discussions we're still having um, with library staff as well as the city manager. Um, in terms of year end estimates, so the number's kind of been fluctuating between 78% and 81%, but right now it's sounding like it's a little closer to 79, 78% that the library will close um, of having spent its general fund budget. Um, the other bit of my report is the CIPs. So we will have window tinting completed in the library within um, the next three weeks. Um, that'll be the tinting that's in the main reading area that like second story windows. And then it'll also be the arched windows within the children's area. The tintine is not gonna be the reflective material that we really don't want. It's gonna be the tintine that's on the sliding front door. So it won't be as blatant um, to the eyes and it'll still have some aesthetic appeal to it. Um, there was the completion of the water bottling station. And then what ended up happening with the bathroom is that's actually gonna be folded into the, the San Marino renovation. And so we were gonna initially phase it into two projects, two years, um, but then the motion was just to move it into the San Marino Center and do it all at once, make it one big project. And then the other change that occurred was the computer room renovation was initially scheduled for this year. As we know, we had to put that project on hold because of post COVID evaluations for that space, but we're gonna move it into next fiscal year. Um, that project has been something that the foundation's been eyeing, and I, to my understanding, that's what they fundraised for. So the city is gonna be um, sharing the cost of the de design of it, and then the foundation will pay for the construction costs. Um, and then we'll finalize those conversations. The Thornton Room uh, project display was taken away from the CIP um, projects just because it was such a small, project so we're just going to move into this uh, library's general fund and then instead of getting a projector we'll get a large um, tv screen so we'll hopefully be able to get a little bit more use out of the board room um aside from that we're going to talk about the budget in a few moments so if you have any questions here um, i have a couple questions and um robert in the revenue section, and we always look at our revenues, um, it, this, the library fees and the fees line, the biggest was, um, donation or revenue was in September of $15,000. Is that from Senec and is it annual or more frequent? Senec uh, is annual, so we only get one payment a year. So we're not looking forward to that soon. Okay, thank you. And then the painting of the library, is that about $30,000? Yes, and that was um, also folded into the library's just operating budget. So um, we'll have that in there. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Robert about the current year budget? Thank you. Let's welcome Finance Director, Mr. Paul Chung to our meeting. And um, along with Robert and Brian he, and Irene, he's gonna go through the budget draft for fiscal year 21-22. Great, thank you so much for having me, Board of uh, Trustees this morning. It is, uh, it is unfortunate that I get to meet you virtually instead of in person, but hopefully in the near future, I'll be able to meet the Board of Trustees in person. Um, I do have a short presentation this morning with the board, and I know it's a little early for budget, and uh, hopefully everyone had some coffee this morning, but I will be quick. Um, let me share a screen here so that I can begin with my presentation. Hopefully everybody sees the uh, proposed, uh, next year's proposed budget. And let me get my mouse here so that it clicks properly. Um, so just a quick background on both. I've been here with the city now a, a little over a year and a half. And during this time, um, I've been through now two budget cycles. Uh, I've also implemented OPEB 
trust funds with the city and then been living through a pandemic, a once in a lifetime pandemic. So it's been a challenging year for probably most of us here, but it's good to see that everyone's healthy. And um, I am being, I, I have a view of an optimistic view for the near future as the library hopefully gets to open up uh, soon. Okay. That said, um, I know the budget packet was sent out with the uh, item uh, last week. I hopefully found, find that um, packet was pretty straightforward. Uh, it was really broken up into five sections. I think the main, um, the budget memo was probably the most important packet being that it gave the reader uh, and the board of trustee a, a view of what the budget uh, we're gonna end the year, but also some detail regards to what we want to uh, uh, pursue for next year as well. And so let me go into just a holistic higher picture of where we are with the city's finances. Um, the city overall, even during this pandemic, the revenues remain intact and it's robust. As you're aware, most of our revenues on the general fund end comes from property taxes. That, uh, that's usually around 60 to 69 to about 70% of our overall revenues. And that remains intact. And also on the expenditure side, as Robert mentioned, uh, the revenues are under control as well. Um, on the library side, as you're aware, the revenues, it's, it's not a revenue generating department. Uh, most of the revenues come in in the form of passport revenues and they reside under what we call charges for service. So if you look at the graph right here, out of the 8%, maybe about a, a little less than 2% of the 8% will be where the library revenues will reside. So it is a very small portion of the overall city's revenue. Um, for next year, our property taxes will continue to remain strong as you, as a resident and a property owner here, you've probably seen your property value um, uh, accelerate or increase in value from prior years. So we do expect that to stay strong. And just a quick summary on the COVID end, um, we did receive, the city did receive $185,000 uh, from the government, which was the CARES Act funding. And then the city is also anticipating another $2.4 million from the American Rescue Plan and, and Act for 2021 that President Biden signed a couple of months ago. So that will be also reflected in our budget for next year. Um, just to emphasize that out of the 2.4 million, 1.4 or half of that is gonna be expected in this current fiscal year. And then the other 1.4 million is expected in the following fiscal year. With that said, I'm jumping into the library's uh, budget. Just wanted to focus on the revenue aspect. For next year, the total revenue on the general fund end, the uh, library is expected to be a little less than $200,000. And then on the donations fund um, front, as Robert mentioned, we are expecting decreased uh, donations revenue um, and so we're forecasting about $21,000 next year. The graph be below you here, the uh, bar graph here, I wanted to break it up between the total library general fund versus the total library donations. And so I wanted to just show that the trend of the overall revenues as it decreased. And the reason for that decrease is mainly the past for revenues back in 1819 we did see a, a high amount of passport revenues, but then as the pandemic began in about February, when the library started closing and the whole world basically shut down, of course, nobody was traveling. So we did see a decrease in, in passport revenues. We do expect for next year though, um, as Robert mentioned that you are seeing an acceleration of passport demand. We do expect that and we kept it flat, meaning just to be conservative, we wanted to keep the revenues at the 1920 levels of revenues. And on the donations end, donations has their peaks and valleys, but we do expect donations to be relatively flat next year. And the, um, Brian will probably emphasize during um, the council meeting, the need or the support from the general fund for some of the loss in donations revenue for next year as well. Moving on to the expenditure side for next year for the library. Uh, the city breaks up the expenditure budget into two categories, personnel budget, and then the service and supplies budget where all the materials and supplies and various contract services are paid out of. 
So for next year, the library's budget is expected to be $1.8 million. Of the $1.8 million, $1.3 million will be personnel expenses. And that comprises of 18.54 FTE or full-time equivalent positions for the library. And then the other portion, 434,000 will be the services and supplies uh, budget for next year. The library has five divisions and the first division of course being administration. They, do ex they are requesting a $30,000 for interior painting next year. But then that budget is actually offset being that this year we did receive um, and complete the 36 computers for the public access computer budget. That was only for this current fiscal year. So obviously that won't be rolling over to next year. So the overall budget on administration is relatively flat. Moving on to adult services division. The division is requesting about $13,000 in increase um, budget for adult programming, art in the park. But then also there's an offset, meaning there's being that there's a decrease in donations, the department is requesting support from the general fund for some of that lost revenues on the donations end. Moving on to children's services, the department is also requesting $15,000 in children's programming, some additional books, replace early childhood uh, literacy station. And some of that is of course offset by the loss in donations as I mentioned earlier. And then pro on the processing end, the department is actually uh, seeing a decrease in budget for next year. And that overall is just, be it, there's a couple of items that are making it decrease overall. But then the main thing is that some of the supplies uh, uh, and services are requested to decrease. At the same time, there's actual budget move from processing to I believe adult services. It's just a, a budget move from one division to the other. And that's why overall that division is seeing a decrease. And lastly, on circulation side, uh, there's nothing being that it's mainly driven by all personnel. And as, you, as it's referenced in the memo, next year's personnel budget uh, is really driven by the 2% MOU increases that are contractually um, obligated and then also our pension costs that are increasing for next year. And that really concludes just my uh, uh, higher picture of the overall budget for library next year. Just the key, key timelines for the upcoming budget meetings. This Friday will be uh, our first budget study session with the city council. This does not cover the library's budget as that will be on the second budget study session on May 7th where the recreation and libraries budget will be presented to the city council. And then lastly, on May 28th, we, I will be presenting the city manager's overall adopted budget or proposed budget for adoption for May 28th. And that really concludes my presentation. Um, la I was on a public safety commission budget meeting last Thursday and once I finished, it seemed that uh, we can always dive back into some of the details or any kind of additional questions. And of course, the department head and myself are here to answer any of the Board of Trustees questions if you have any. And that's all I have. Thank you. I have a couple questions regarding donations. Okay. Um, you said there was $21,000 in total revenue for donation. Uh, that is for budget for next year, yes. And how much of that is assumed um, that the friends are going to donate versus other sources? Can you speak to that? Uh, let's see. Um, the, I have the budget line item for revenues broken out. It looks like for next year, the friends will be 10000 out of that 21000 So about half of the 21000 will be um, projected for the friends revenue, donations. Yeah. Revenue. The balance of the other 11000 Where's that coming from? Uh, let's see. It looks like a thousand from is a crane art light gallery. I can't believe it that. Another two thousand from library wish list donations. Um, here, let me get a, let me get a ruler here really quick. Okay. <laughs> um, Five hundred for adult materials donations. Let's see. Two thousand five hundred dollars for the adult Chinese language material. Um, and That's then, from the Chinese club group? I believe so. Maybe Robert. Yeah. Yes, it is from the Chinese club. 
And then lastly, another 5,000 from Children's Materials Donations. That McFarland. Thank you, Robert. Thanks, Robert. Three, four, five, ten. There we go. Yeah. Um, thank you. And what is the assumption you're making for passport revenues? So the passport revenues, the, my assumption was based upon basically 1920 revenues, being that towards the last quarter or the three months of the year is when we saw basically passport revenues end. So our assumption was, okay, for next year, as we slowly come back to what we call normalcy, travel as there was probably a pent up demand for or for travel um we thought okay let's just assume that uh the three first three quarter or first three months there will be lack of revenues from for um passports but then the remaining nine months of the year we might go back to what we call normalcy so we assumed okay let's keep it at the level of 1920s of what we collected actually in passport revenues and that's how we came about for next year's budget Thank you. And Steve, maybe that's a timing pattern for some of our publicity too, to really amp up some of our passport usage. I mean, purchases, applications. Right. Thank you, Paul. Um, Paul, about uh, another question. What is our total ask of the city for one-time general funds? And Robert, I think there was one of the slides about that. Or Paul, could you show it? I don't know who's doing the screen sharing. Um, I am, and so I can show you. Let me just make sure I understand where, which one you're looking for here. Let me get to that slide. Were you re referencing this slide or probably this slide? That slide, thank you. So I see 30,000 for the library. And um, so what's the total that we're asking for one-time funds from the city? You mean from due to the the lack of donations? Uh, overall, any for any reason, one time that we're asking for more money, one time. Um, let me make sure. Uh, let me try to take a shot at that and see what. And maybe I'm I might be answering this. So for next year's budget, the whole if you go to let's say for the memo, and I I know I have it here in front of me. If you go to the memo page here, oh you can't see it here. Um, on the first table, you will see that the overall budget request for next year is $75,000. Okay. And out of that $75,000, $67,000 is all strictly personnel. So the only real ask for any increase in budget is $8,208 for next year from the current year's budget to next year's budget. How does the thirty thousand dollars for painting fit into that? Is that a one-time request? Yes. So painting, being that it's more of a maintenance type of request, we viewed it as instead of a CIP request, it's more of an operating request, and so it is a one-time budget for next year. Um, on, uh, I have a some questions about the other pages that we got for the purposes of our packet. And Robert, I'm looking at page 26 of 82, and that is, what is, I can't see the whole thing. It's titled Kroll Public Library Summary, and it lists the FTEs, the full-time equivalents. Um, are there tie-out, is there a tie-out page to this that not only says what the FTEs are, but what the costs are gonna be for those positions? Um, we don't provide that breakout, meaning um, at least for the budget packet, but on the budget book, the budget book that I will draft for the community will actually have a cost breakdown of what the positions cost and overall impact to the general fund. Does that go to the city council on May 7th or is that a separate thing? Yes, it won't go on May 7th, but it will be uh, presented to the city council on the 27th uh, of May. Okay, thank you. On that same page at the bottom in the bright yellow, we're talking about expenditures and expenditures by fund. 281 restricted donations fund and it's 
but we said there was going to, we were anticipating $21,000 in donations. Can you speak to that and help me understand? So being that there's probably residual or leftover balances in your donations fund, because the, the way finance slash accounting is tracking all your donations, we keep a balance rolling every year. And of course, if you're, if you're going to expend more next year versus what you're going to bring in on donations, you're just going to be utilizing that balance, donation balance and dwindling it down. So maybe not for right now, but for in the next week or two, are we having a balance of unspent donation money um, moving forward into the next year? I don't have that number in front of me, unfortunately, but yes, uh, the way we view it is there should be a um, remaining balance or what we call fund balance remaining in your donations that will be rolling over uh, to next year but I don't have that exact number in front of me. I can check with you maybe in a couple of weeks. I know you're busy with all the departments. Oh, Liz, call, yes. I can actually um, speak to that a little bit. So okay. on my budget monitor, on my donations monitor, sorry, that number, the reserve is still relatively unchanged just because Tara has not tapped into the reserve. She's only spent from the donations that she's received this year. Rebecca has not spent from her reserves at all. Um, and the library hasn't spent from its admin reserves. So that balance, that reserves balance is pretty much unchanged. Why haven't they spent it? That's a great question. I think they both Thank need to do their own. Um, Robert, on that same donations monitor, at the very bottom, it says restricted donation reserve fund balance. And I wanna come back to that because um, Going back to that page that we were just looking at, the expenditures of Fund 281 are titled Restricted Donations Fund. But then if you go down to the library administration sheet on page 28, expenditures by fund are called 281 Donations Fund. That's a different title. Are they different funds? And how does that tie to our restricted donations balance on your, your budget donation sheet? They're not different funds. It's just, they were just named differently. The, the donations are donations. Um, sometimes we call it restricted donations, but they're all restricted donations. So one thing before it goes to the city council would be to make it consistent. Um, and how does it tie to that restricted donation fund balance on your page, Robert? Will there be more added to that, for instance? So it depends on how much is spent by this year end. So um, because we have received some donations, if we happen to expend all that we received this fiscal year, then no, nothing will be added to the fund balance. However, if we somehow do not spend it all, then that will be added to the fund balance. And right now, I think the only donations we've received are from Chinese Club um, and some for children's services. So children's services may potentially see a small increase, but again, that depends on the programming um, from Tara and what she ends up buying this year from that fund. Perhaps when, um, Paul, when you have more information, we could have a budget meeting with Genevieve because I think I'm hearing different things and I'm, I've, I don't understand this as well as you do. But um, I think what you just said, Robert, is any unspent donations go into that restrictive reserve donation. And I think what Paul said was any unspent donations roll over into next year into that column that said $47,000 available. So maybe it's just where you're denoting the money and reporting to us. And maybe I could learn more in the next week or two from you guys. We could Fair definitely enough. do that. Fair enough. Uh, we, yep. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Regards to what Robert mentioned on the donations, he is correct that any rev, any donations that are remaining, a balance, let's say, is remaining, it will roll into your reserve. And from that reserve, we want to go ahead and budget that, knowing the fact that you're going to have an X amount remaining in your donations. You want to utilize that reserve and then you budget for that. So I, I think Robert and I are probably talking the same 
context, yeah, but at yeah, the same yeah. time, a different structure. <laughs> well, and I think I have a lot to learn, and I look forward to talking with you further about that. Please understand, I'm not interested in accruing a donations fund. I'm more interested in having staff spend yeah. money. Um, on another topic completely, in the reopening um, materials that we got in our packet, I believe they were from LA County, there was something that said cleaning is required at least daily rather than hourly. And I'm wondering what does the current custodial service include and if custodian costs are gonna increase because of the reopening protocols? Okay. That's a great question, Liz. We would have to revisit the contract for that, the custodian. What's their um, current, how often do they currently clean? Daily. Okay. So there are other cleaning um, like uh, mandates for the, um, the doorknobs and the counters in the library and so forth. So I, I think that's something we may need to plan for and hopefully would be covered by some of the CARES money you talked about. It won't be CARES as we have maximized the CARES, but it will be the American Rescue. I see, I see. okay. Yeah. The second of the two. Yes, the second, the second portion you. of the money, yes. Okay. Um, on the first page, I believe you called it the memo that accompanied the budget. And in the packet, let's see. In my packet, it's page 16 of 82. And Robert, maybe you could show that. I'm looking at the operating budget summary table. So you said six, oh. 16 of 82. It's the first page of the narrative. The operating budget summary, one up, one more. There we go. In the, can you make that larger, that table? So in the third column, I'm reading, and please tell me the budget versus estimate difference, we saw savings of $384,222. Yes. And that's the savings that you're saying we budgeted, but we haven't spent in this year. Yes. Now, in January, the city council approved an additional $380,000 for community services to continue recreation programs for community engagement. Is that the same $380,000? No. The city council did not approve or appropriate additional funding at that time. They did not? And Brian, maybe you can speak for this too, but um, uh, at that time, it was just a report to the city council to let them, the council know that, um, you know, the revenues aren't going to be coming in as what we projected, plus, but then offset by the expenditures that are not going to be spent uh, versus what the budget was forecasted to be. Brian, could you provide additional... Um, I, I might be able to summarize quickly. So Liz, what we basically took to the council was just that the net cost was increasing. That's all, that's all it was, that we were informing the council that the net cost for recreation was increasing due to the lack of revenue. So if the net cost is increasing, you needed some more money because you didn't have the revenue. Well, no, we didn't get any more money. We, it was the same expenditure budget, but it was just um when we took the budget to propose last year we said we were expecting this much in revenue we were expecting this much of expenditure and we expect this net cost as the year progressed we weren't materializing revenue so the net cost just increased but we didn't actually increase the expenditure budget you didn't increase the budget right. but because they didn't have money coming in the money had to come somewhere from somewhere and the minutes of that meeting um, talk about council member Tall and Rami affirmed the community services department increased emphasis on community engagement. Understand that the corresponding loss of revenue from other programming are unavailable during COVID will result in the operating budget of the city absorbing an additional $380,000. So they absorbed that 
those costs, but they also absorb the savings from the library. So overall, what that meant is that as we planned out our current budget this year, we were anticipating to, to end the year at a certain degree. But as we've progressed through the pandemic and through the fiscal year, we noticed that they were the city wasn't going to bring in the revenue to offset some of the expenditures. Obviously, there was less expenditures to, to being that the library was closed. So at the end of the day, what we wanted to uh, notify the city council was that we were going to be shy at $380,000 and it letting the council know that if that's okay without amending the budget and they were okay with that direction. Because you already knew you were saving the library and I don't want to keep going over this in the interest of time, but I, I, our, my fellow trustees are smart people and I don't think we're, you know, and it troubles me greatly that we aren't spending money that's available when we have needs as for books. Anyway, is there any other um, any other questions on the budget? No, I think we should move on. Okay, thank you. I, I, I do have one quick question, just just because I I'm, I don't understand. Um, what what is what are cafeteria benefits? Uh, uh, cafeteria benefits is not when you go to the cafeteria to eat. It's it covers our medical plans, our dental plans, and our vision plan. Figured as much. Thank you. No problem. Lois, any questions? No. Dr. Molno, Linda, any questions? Linda, you're on mute. Sorry, I was trying to uh, get rid of the gardener's blower. Um, I would, um, I'd appreciate understanding uh, more about the questions that you were raising, especially on the donations. And then the last, um, uh, the last point, $380,000. So if, um, you know, if we could uh, maybe even before the May meeting have a better understanding so that we can go through the May meeting with more confidence, um, I, I would appreciate that. Are you suggesting that Genevieve and I try to meet with Paul and um, Robert before it goes to the city council? I, 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 I'm, ha I'm happy to try to do that time-wise, but Genevieve and I are just two liaisons. We can't, um, you know, this board can ask them to make changes before it goes to council, but I don't think just Genevieve and I can ask for changes. See what I mean? I, I just, I'm just concerned that it's going to council without us having had uh, the opportunity to really uh, debate and discuss uh, some of these points. It, and, I, and, I, and I know we were concerned about this um, for the last couple of months that it, we, it might be a, again a rushed process where we weren't given adequate, um, adequate time to raise our own concerns. Um, I, I saw this budget last Thursday or Friday and um, I was able to look at it and then meet with Brian and Robert and ask some initial questions. And then I looked at it again in comparison to a year ago over the weekend. Um, asked Genevieve if she had any questions. Yeah. Our current questions really are um, about the anticipated donations. I don't think we disagree with the figures that the um, budget reflects and that is going to the city council. Um, I, I also think a budget is just, um, it's, a, it's a guide for your income and expenditures that if, if we see our donations going do down, we can make changes during the year or report it. I, I don't want to stop the, the progress and the timing. I think they need to go on to get this submitted to the city. No, I, I realize that. I just, I guess I would just like to, um, you know, just voice my concern that uh, yet again, uh, we've been put in a position where it, we're just being asked to rubber stamps. 
something without having had much opportunity to really uh, go through it. And I'm not, I'm not a numbers person. I, it takes me a lot longer than just a week to actually absorb and try to understand some of this. Um, and you know, and I will definitely bend to whatever you think um, appropriate, Liz, because I know you've had much more experience um, dealing with budgets than I have. But I just I want it to raise a concern on the part of the board that we're not all accountants. We don't uh, we can't necessarily just um, absorb this uh, quickly and um, and say okay. One thing I just wanted to add is as we as I uh, present the budget to the city council and they do adopt the budget for next year, that doesn't rule out as um, as it's a plan, budget is a plan, and that during the first six months of the fiscal year, if there's necessary changes, we, I can always bring the budget back to the city council during what I produce to the city council mid-year, which comes, it's around January when I produce a mid-year report to the city council. During that time, we have that ability to ask the city council to uh, make modifications to the budget if need be to as well. Just wanted to add that. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, Steve, any questions? Did I ask? I do, I, I, I do have two questions. Um, w w the one question I had was um, on page 20 of 80, where it has average program attendance. If you all go there. Yeah, um, again, not a numbers person, not a math person, but something seems a little off. I just wanted to check where it says, for fiscal year 2019, this is the operating metrics. Uh, for 2019, the total program attendees were 8950, leading to an average program attendance of 27. And then for fiscal year 2021, uh, the year to date was of total program attendees was 2025, leading to an average program attendance of 26. That that does not. It's more like seven. That, that's that doesn't make sense. Uh, and the same thing for the estimate for the year. So. I'm not sure how you get an average program attendance of 26 with a drop of <laughs> nearly a third. So that might, that might be, maybe. That's a good one to fix before it goes to city council. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, the, and the other question I had um, was on page 24 of 80, the, uh, where it says called public library summary. Um, for for the the first line item there, full time community services director for 2021, the budget was 0.3, a third of time estimated 0.3 as well, and proposed for 21 22 is 0.3. Are we not going to pay Brian his full salary? What's going on here? I, or does it or does it only work where a third of the cost goes to the library? And if so, what's 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 up with that? Brian, yeah. Brian works hard. He needs to get paid. Oh, no. He should be paid 110% probably, but <laughs> he is the community <laughs> services director, and his 70.70 70 70 resides under recreation. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Those are my only two questions on budget. Any other questions about budget? Um, I, I, I'm sorry, uh, Chair. I just wanted to note that on page 24 of 82, where the org chart is, um, we did leave out a librarian position on that, even though it has been budgeted. Uh, it was just an error on our part, and we will add that position back into the org chart. Thank and, you. And many thanks to you uh, last week for pointing that out to us. Appreciate that. I'm just trying to figure it all out and keep up with you, Brian. Um, thank you. Uh, let's go on to the director and city librarian update report. Um, Irene? He's, uh, he's muted. Irene, you're muted. Can we assume when it's gone? There's better. Yeah. Gosh. Well, uh, Lois, I think your garden is uh, there. <laughs> Director Haworth and I uh, worked together on this report. 
Um, and as you can see, it covers a lot of information, the CIPs, the maintenance. Um, we went over our budget, which is great. We're talking about reopening near the beginning of June. And uh, as you look on your county page now, it says that you can have 75% uh, occupation. So we're going to figure out over the next month what kind of phasing we want to do. I mean, the, the, the governor of California has said that the whole tier system is going to be out the window in the middle of the month. So uh, we'll probably do a soft opening and take it slow for a little while before we open completely. And uh, that will be a big help, not only for our patrons who will be able to get books, but for our passport, um, for our passport service, because they'll be able to put a lot more clerks onto the passport uh, desk and they'll be able to be walk-ins and that kind of thing. So we hope to see that by the beginning of July. It's moving fast. And a lot of other libraries are open or partially open now. Um, we're going to do some trainings on that. Uh, SCLC, our, our library cooperative, has purchased uh, a training from a, a respected uh, director, a person who trains about how to handle the homeless and that kind of thing. So we're going to listen on Thursday to his presentation about how to handle people who don't want to wear a mask because we, see, we foresee mask wearing being mandatory for the near future. And also other problem, problem behaviors. We're working on a new upgrade to our library information system, our ILS, and it, it will look different and look a lot sharper. We're hoping it will have more functionality. So we've been doing some training on that. We have, the, we have access to that material. So that will be set up within the next three weeks. We've got some new eBooks bought with the $2,000 that the foundation gave us. Um, print circulation is down a little, eBook is up, and Flipster is way down. Now, in our next year, we're going to get a new service called Press Reader. Miss Rebecca, do you want to give us an overview of Press Reader as opposed to Flipster? Sure. So Flipster, I think we have access to nine magazines um, that we get a regular subscription to. And um, I don't have the numbers. I should have them in front of me. But for Press Reader, it's much more than nine. It's, it's seemingly unlimited. If you're looking for a magazine, you'll most likely find it on Press Reader. Um, it's something that I've been looking at for a while because they give really great access to LA Times. Um, if you try to access LA Times right now through our library subscription, you'll get more of a database look. And this is more of a front page of the news look that you'd be interested in. Um, L this is the, the service that Los Angeles Public Library uses, Press Reader. So that's how I became aware of it. And I'm really excited going forward. It has a lot of options for customization as well. So if you you know, you find a magazine or newspaper that you like, you can subscribe to it and make sure that it's on your dashboard. Um, and it also has a bunch of different languages that you can filter through. So it'll be helpful for our Chinese community as well. So I'm very excited about it. It's a new service and I think it's, it's superior to what we have. So oh, yeah, and the cost of it for press reader, it costs like right now what we pay for LA Times and Flipster put together, it costs half of that and gives us like a million times the offerings. So I'm very excited. Sounds like a deal. Uh-huh. <laughs> so look for that in the new fiscal year. Uh, we got a positive Yelp review. It's kind of small in the packet, but she was saying, I love going to Crow Library to borrow books. It's a great way to save money on books that you've been looking forward to reading. So, uh, our public appreciates us. I was glad to see that. Oh, and our partnerships, the friends continue to trickle in some money through their online bookstore. We're hopeful that they'll be able to open as the library reopens because everybody's been vaxxed up. So we'll see what that looks like. And of course the foundation, Trivia Night Fever is coming up. And oh, and then when it's programming, we had a great Easter 
adjacent program called the Great San Marino Egg Hunt. Um, let me turn once again to librarian Russell and Torres to talk about our updates for our April programs in May. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Awesome. <laughs> Do you want to go first, Tara? I'm, I'm like, were you pointing at me? <laughs> <laughs> like, you, me, you, me. Who um, it, that's fine. You can go first. Okay, so we had some great April programs. Um, I wanted to first point out if you were a part of the prohibition and repeal mixology program, you would have gotten this great Kroll branded shaker along with the little stir. It was a hit. I really enjoyed that program and we're having her back again for a 4th of July born in the USA type program. So um, super knowledgeable instructor. And once again, she's one of these instructors that I wouldn't have had access to if we weren't living in this weird Zoom virtual land because uh, she lives in uh, Michigan and she was just super knowledgeable. Everyone had a great time. So that was a lot of fun. Um, what else? So right now we're doing our bird feeder make and take kits. I unveiled them last week for pickup and I, I know we've probably gone through a little more than half. Um, there's 40 people that signed up for them plus 10 on the wait list. So I'm giving the 40 people a chance to pick it up and then there's usually a few stragglers. So I'll open it up to the wait list on Wednesday. Um, we have the office trivia this Thursday, which I'm very excited about. Our trivia nights are always a great time. Um, we're giving away a Dwight Schrute bobble-headed doll, if you're familiar with that. So, you know, if you guys know anything about the office, feel free to sign up. And uh, yeah, looking forward to our May programs as well and kind of just thinking about creative marketing opportunities to get the, words out, the word out. Um, and that's about all. I turn it over to Librarian Torres. Alrighty, so April was a very busy month for children's. We have our, the first of our Grossology subscription kit. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Grossology is the science of gross things. So we had about 50 kids register. They signed up and they got a kit with fun activities that are really yucky, but we talk about the science behind them, such as why it's important to brush your teeth really well. They got to do a plaque check to see how well they did that. Their mouth turned purple. They got to make some fake blisters and wounds. It's kind of like some Hollywood magic at home. Um, we got some really fun pictures of Brian's kids. I don't know if anyone follows our social media, but we did get a photo of some gross fake wounds on there. And you can't talk about gross things without talking about poop. So we got, they played a match the scat game. And we have two more months of that coming up. And again, it's been very, very popular. Marcella also had her son participate. So looking forward to see what else we have planned for the next two months. Um, we have our Lego Live program. This is a Zoom program that we do once a month. I partner with the recreation department for this. We had a few kids come and they were building with Legos. We give them different challenges. We play Zoom games. So, so that happened. We are doing still our sidewalk top obstacle course. I don't know if anyone's driven by the library lately, but we have a couple of our library monitors every month. They're out there with chalk in hand and they make a monthly themed obstacle course. As long as it doesn't rain, it's there. <laughs> so check it out next time you drive by on West. We have the monthly, no, excuse me, the weekly virtual story time that's still happening. And once a month, I do a super story time experience with scarves and shaky eggs and the crafts. We've had a good response to that as well. And my last big thing for April was an Earth Day Explorer kit. This was hugely, hugely popular. We had 100 people register for it. And this one had different activities they could do. So the first activity was a backyard scavenger hunt. They had a magnifying glass and different clues and things to find in the backyard. Directions on how to make a human sundial. Um, we, we can't talk about Earth Day without talking about recycling and upcycling. So we had materials to make an upcycled tic-tac-toe on the go kit. We also, again, partnered with the rec department and they provided a beginner planting kit. So that was really popular. We had recommended books to read and bonus ideas to do at home. So April was jam packed. 
Thank you. It. Yeah. Thank you. Um, also for the office trivia night, we will have a special guest who was an actor on the office. You won't know him by name, but he often played the uh, executives that come in in the background and go, oh yeah, but he can answer a lot of questions about the office. Mm -hmm. 